uh, people always ask me if I'm afraid of bombing when I do stand-up comedy, like aren't I afraid of failure? And I always feel like I have to remind them that I teach introductory microeconomics <laughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Shortly before the election, I did a gig in Wichita. Uh, and I had a woman who joined me at the dinner table there, uh, and the first thing basically out of her mouth after I sat down was she said that if Obama was elected president, she was afraid that in five years she would be wearing a burqa. So after the election, I sent her a catalog. <laughs> and I sent her a note, and the note said, I'm not trying to rub it in, but the economy needs you to buy a burqa now. <laughs> Jay Leno says that anybody can become a professional comedian if they give it seven years. I'm on year number four. <laughs> that means that I'm ABD. <laughs> so if graduate school is any guide, that means that I get to spend the next three years sucking up to older comedians who aren't as funny as I am. <laughs> uh, after those last couple of jokes, uh, this would be an opportune time to thank the folks at the American Economic Association for sponsoring this. <laughs> I've actually tried to get a humor session going at the AEA for a couple of years now, uh, and the sessions kept getting rejected. Uh, and finally, I got so upset that I started writing a rap song about getting dissed by the AEA. Uh, fortunately, the session was accepted this year before I got much farther than the chorus, which included the refrain, thanks but no thank you, we'd rather listen to N. Gregory Mankiw. I don't bomb very often. Uh, I did have the uh, pleasure of bombing a few weeks ago. Uh, it was for a show for some bankers. Uh, <laughs> and, and I really didn't do very well at this particular show. Uh, and I, I did so poorly, in fact, that I spent a fair amount of time kind of soul searching afterwards, trying to figure out what had gone wrong in my act. Uh, and I eventually decided that the problem was in my opening line, which was, hey, how's it going? <laughs> say a little bit about the financial crisis, you know, because I'm an economist, many of you have this experience, I'm sure, um, uh, people keep asking you to comment on the financial crisis. Uh, this is hard for me because I'm an environmental economist. <laughs> asking me about macroeconomics is like asking someone who works at a bank how to make money. <laughs> that last punchline actually uh, tells the history of the financial crisis. When I came up with that joke about 12 months ago, the joke went like this, asking me about macroeconomics is like asking someone who works at a Wall Street investment bank how to make money in the long run. <laughs> and about six months ago, I realized that I could shorten it. <laughs> and it just became asking me about macroeconomics is like asking someone who works at a Wall Street investment bank how to make money. And then it became like asking someone at a bank how to make money. And my real concern is that in three months, it's just going to be, it's like asking someone how to make money. <laughs> economy right now, I'd have to go with the hamster, <laughs> but like a really tired hamster that's been running around its cage for like seven years. Right now it's exhausted. As a microeconomist, I would say that the hamster needs some rest. Macroeconomists, of course, look at the hamster and think that it needs some methamphetamines. <laughs> month I've learned that the three most terrifying words in the English language are macroeconomists agree that. <laughs> I'm sure they're right about the hamster needing methamphetamines, but all I'm saying is that in two years that is going to be one ugly hamster. <laughs> one of the challenges of being an economics comedian is that it's very difficult to find places to practice. <laughs> Some of these new jokes that I'm telling you tonight, for instance, I've only done once before. Uh, and that was two hours ago on an interview with the PBS NewsHour with Jim Lehrer. <laughs> it's like, they interviewed Ken Arrow, they interviewed Joe Stiglitz, and they interviewed me. <laughs> I feel like kind of a self-aware version of Sarah Palin. <laughs> we have to slow down. We have to speed up. A paradox, you might say. No wonder it's so difficult to know how long it will take to resolve. On our website, you can hear more of Paul's conversation with the stand-up economist. It's all...
For details about my new book, more comedy videos, and information about upcoming shows, visit StandUpEconomist.com.